Hi again, everyone. It's Jeff, and this is part two of the lecture on Bloom's Taxonomy in the University Teaching Program. We've been looking at this diagram, which is a ranked hierarchy of cognitive tasks, where higher level tasks are generally thought to involve the lower level ones. Strictly speaking, this is not the whole taxonomy. Although, as we move on to the other parts, it's no longer really Bloom's taxonomy because Bloom didn't come up with the whole thing. The taxonomy often gets divided into three domains, one to do with academic and thinking skills, one that's emotional and social, and one that's physical and emotional. The technical terms are the cognitive domain, affective domain, and psychomotor domain. So we've been looking at the cognitive domain. The affective domain, was come up with later, and Bloom was still involved with this one. There are several versions of the psychomotor domain that have been published, and as far as I know, Bloom wasn't involved with them. We will focus on the cognitive domain, partly because it's where most of the work has been done by people, and for most of you, it will be the most relevant. However, I'm going to argue that you really shouldn't neglect the affective domain. For most of you, the psychomotor domain probably isn't as important, but for some of you, if you're teaching sports or outdoor activity-related courses or dance or acting, the psychomotor domain is probably crucial. Also, if you're feeling that the taxonomy is just way too simple, I'll point out that there's a recent revision that introduces a two-dimensional taxonomy. Here it is. I actually really like this two-dimensional taxonomy. I find it's often easier to place things in it because it's less ambiguous. However, if you're new to Bloom's taxonomy, I really don't recommend it, and for our purposes it would be like swatting a fly with a sledgehammer. Before finishing up this lecture, I just want to point you at the effective domain and emphasize that you shouldn't neglect it. So here are some of CBU's graduate attributes, and it'll now be more meaningful to you than it was in lecture one when I say that the academic dimensions are mostly cognitive domain related and the personal dimensions are largely affective domain. So let's look at something in the personal dimensions and see if we can make a reasonable objective out of it. Here's a proposed objective that I could make out of this item in the personal dimensions. However, if you're paying close attention, and particularly if you're an aficionado of Bloom's taxonomy, you might not like what I just did. I just took a statement that started with appreciate and recognize the value of, and I replaced it with an objective using the words compare and contrast. Now, compare and contrast is definitely cognitive domain. It's usually placed at the analyze level in cognitive domain whereas appreciate and recognize value would be at the value level of affective domain. So I've taken something affective and turned it into a cognitive objective. Well, probably the number of courses where students are going to do the really hard work of unpacking their own value systems and examining them in the light of other value systems is a pretty small fraction of courses, but you can move them in that direction by getting them first to engage intellectually with the material. Now some of you, particularly those of you like me in STEM fields, might be feeling that all this affective domain stuff is pretty woolly-headed and touchy-feely, way too touchy-feely for your courses. But I want to point you at the engineering program graduate attributes. The engineering program is hardly touchy-feely, but have a look at these attributes. These are mostly or entirely affective domain. So those of us in STEM fields should be paying attention to the affective domain. 